Welcome to WordPath, the show about Oklahoma Indian languages and the people who are teaching and preserving them. Tonight's show is the third in a series of four shows to feature excerpts from an event called the Celebration of Oklahoma Indian Language and Culture, which was held in Norman on October 22nd and was sponsored by Intertribal WordPath Society. About 300 people came to the fairgrounds, the county fairgrounds in Norman, to enjoy an evening of stories, songs, poetry, and history. Tonight we'll hear from Ted Isham and Linda Alexander. or cultural bearers is to try to um, be involved in that process and, and take advantage of, of whatever uh, programs are available because if we don't use it then the, the money disappears or somebody else uses it <clears throat> example of uh, excuse me example of, of their outreach effort this time they awarded 12 contracts or 12 uh, Apprenticeships, our master apprenticeship programs, and uh, out of those 12, 11 were uh, tribal oriented, and one was non-tribal, non-native. So, again, what I'd like for for you to do is just to consider all of your options in trying to help preserve whatever bit of culture that we have and look to programs that can help them and assist that. Um, I'll have uh, the Arts Council uh, leaflet and some uh, uh, 
of business cards of the contact person. And I encourage each of the groups that hasn't been involved in this to try to get involved. So, one of the things that the that Arts Council program does is, is try to help Native groups, um, try to help themselves uh, stem the tide that, that's, that's all around us and that tide of uh, losing our culture, losing our language. As we all know, um, our elders, as tribal people, as all people, our elders contain all of the information that we have about us as a people. And they are the people, they are, these are the group of people that um, re can relate that information to us and are willing to relate. We just need to get out, and, as younger group, we just need to get out and, and um, elicit that information so that the process can continue. They, our elders, obtain this information from their elders. And that's just the way that our cultures uh, operate. So like oral tradition, with the passive. The more time that we spend not um, involving our elders, the, the fewer and fewer elders there are to involve. Pretty soon, uh, those elders will be no more. And the, the thought occurred to me, one of these days, we will be the elders of our group. You know, that's a, that's a sobering thought. What will we, as the elder, have to pass on to our generations that follow us? I'm ashamed of myself for not listening to my grandparents when I was little. So I encourage all the tribal groups to try to take advantage of this State Arts Council program. What, what brings us here is uh, on the Master Apprentice program basically is uh, Linda Alexander is willing to teach me, or try to teach me, the, the art form of storytelling in, in our language, which is Muscogee Creek. And uh, in telling these stories in the Muscogee, there are a lot. There, there is a lot of uh, cultural information that is passed in telling these stories, and uh, we have to be attentive to these things and, and flesh that that underlying thought out or idea, so that whenever our time comes, then we can pass that same information on. These are akin to like Aesop's fables or um, just stories about daily life or maybe a moral story or how to conduct yourself or history. And they're all very important to us. And we need to try to catch as many of these as we can before um, our elders leave us. The, I've heard the saying say that when an elder passes away, it's like a, a library burning up. All the books that were in that library are no longer available to us. You know, I, I cannot go back and, and ask my grandparents some of the stories, the things that they tried to tell me, because they're gone. Hopefully, uh, Linda will be able to relate to me in, in the course of this program some small facet of uh, Creek life that uh, I didn't know before. And again, uh, this is uh, Linda Alexander, teacher, storyteller, traditionalist, and uh, all around good person. Give a listen. What over. Thank you, Ted. <clears throat> I'm Linda Alexander. I was born and raised in Seminole County near Sasapa, Oklahoma in March 21st, 1917. And during that time, my parents, I just had my father. My, my mother died when I was small. So my father had to be my mother and 
and took care of me. And while in those process, well, they used to have a lot of we used to have a lot of company to uh, to come to our house and tell Indian stories and old legend stories. Of course, I didn't understand. I was seven years old at that time, and I didn't understand some of these things. So a lot of times I uh, just thought it was just words that they were talking about or somebody that they were talking about. But I began to learn. My dad told me that someday you may be able to use this now. And if you learn anything, well, relate it to your children. If you have any children, and I have a family of six children, and I, I don't have parents, but I don't have no brothers or sisters, just me and my children. And I have several grandchildren, and I try to relate these stories to them, whether they understand it or not. But I try to tell them in Indian, and in English too. And then whenever I go before the crowd or before the program or anywhere, I've done that at OU and Oklahoma State University, and I try to relate it that my language and in Indian, in English, translate it into English so that they will understand what I'm talking about. So I try to uh, relate that and then in my lessons, I try to create things that I have learned in my elder from my elders, and I didn't know how to speak anything in English when I was growing up. I was just full blood and spoke Indian language only. When I started to school, that's all I taught, and I made signs whenever I needed anything. But uh, all along the way, it seemed like things had happened that I was able to cope some of the English words and I able to speak and translate some of the words and that I'm thankful for that because anything I do, I usually ask the Lord to help me and I always depend on that because I know that our Father is our Creator and we lean to Him and we lean to the things that we look forward to in, in, in our lives and ask him in, in faith. And I shall tell you a story of a turtle in English and then in Indian. Uh, once upon a time, there was a turtle. And this turtle was crawling around. There was a couple of women uh, pounding corn in a mud like this that had a, a hole in it like that and they were pounding corn and while they were pounding corn uh, the turtle came around around the uh, mud there and crawled around there and there was two women that were pounding this corn and they were using this to pound the corn then the Indian people most of the Indian, my Indian people and I'm sure the other Indian tribes too use corn for their regular uh, food and that's what they were doing is trying to get some uh, corn pounded so that they could have food. So while they were pounding, the turtle came around the mud there and crawled around there and, he's, he, uh, and the woman says, get away, get away. I don't want you here, you just bothered me. And I'm working, but of course the turtle is hungry, so he kept crawling around. And she told him again, and he didn't. He didn't heed to that. He just come around and 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 uh, bothered her again. And she said, "You're bothering me. Now I'm working, so may things uh, turn this way." And she kicked him, and she kicked him so that he will fall backwards and he fell on his back, and the turtle has a hard time getting back on, on his stomach, so finally he just eased on until he got back on his stomach, and then he started crawling back to the mud again. And this time, she was angry, real angry at him. So she says, now I told you not to, not to bother me, she said. 
and she took this, this pounder, this is the pounder, and the heavy part, she took it and pounded him and mashed him all to pieces. And he laid there and he just thought to himself, he said, what am I gonna do? I'm beaten now. I can't even crawl, I can't even move. I, I guess I'm just going to die here. But he kept moving a little bit, a little bit, and finally crawled to come to a log. There's a big old log there. And he knew he couldn't crawl over that log, so he just sat there. And while he was sitting there, something came to him. Like, like I said, the good Lord always watches over things. So uh, something told him in in uh, Indian word, and I shall uh, translate it in a minute. Anyway, in Indian word, this uh, a song came to him and says, and uh, so the turtle said those, and they told, and something told him to say it four times now, because the Indian people do things four times in medicine, in storytelling, and whatever. They say they repeat it four times if they're asked to. So he said that, and whenever he got through saying that, he began to get himself back together and, and, and uh, get back to get his body and her shell, began to get back together, and finally got back together. And, and, and the turtle has those creases in his back. That's, that's where he got himself back together. And uh, that means rub the rocks together and glue, it glues together. So that meant for him to get those shells back and glue himself together. So that's why the turtle has that creases on his back. <coughs> ตกตะกี้ฮอกโกลิตจะอาจจะโคจะกี้เวลาเองอาจจะว่าโคจะกี้เวลาตัวเองเอ่อเอ่อลุจะดาทะทิชอาสตัวเองลิจันอิมะท
once upon a time, this, there was a, an old man lived in the, down the road from the rabbit and had two daughters. He had two daughters and um, so whenever he went to buy that, he just would go by and kind of glance at the girls and he'd go by and glance at the girls and he said, one of these days I'm going to stop and talk to him. So he finally made up his mind and got brave enough to stop and talk to him. And he says, uh, well, hi. And of course, the Indians always say, like it was Jay, that means sit down. And uh, he said, no, I've come to see the old man. So the old man wasn't there. And I said, the old man isn't here. He's down at the barn fixing uh, the barn down there. And he said, okay, I'll just go down there and help him. So the rabbit trotted down there, and, and while he was going down there, he thought, well, what shall I say to the old man? I just wanted to see the women, he thought. But anyway, he went on down, and he went on down there, and he stood there without saying hi or anything. And so the old man said, it's Jay, that means hello. And and said, lady must Jay. He said, the man, sit down. So, he said, no, I come to help you work on your barn. So the old man uh, was glad that somebody came to help him. So he says, okay, you can come help me. Uh, by the way, he said, I forgot two tools and it's at the house. And said, you, you go up to the house and ask those women that uh, uh, where those two tools are and bring it back to me. And that rabbit was just itching to get to talk to the women. So he went up there, and while he was going up there, well, he, he uh, stopped and thought, well, this is my day. So he went up there, and he stopped, and he says, um, he went up to the house, and the girl says, uh, not still one. What is it, they said. And he says, uh, Chulot, the old man says, that means, Chulot means old man. He said, the old man said for me to come up and, get, and make love to both of you, he said. <laughs> and, and, uh, and they said, you're lying. You're, you, you, the old man didn't say no such a thing. And he said, yes, he did. He said, let me call back to him and holler at him and see if, if he says, okay, will y'all let me? And, this, and the girl said, yeah. So uh, the, the man says, Hopeful, uh, you met both of them, didn't you? He said, and, and the old man down there met, knew that he needed two tools. So he said, hey, hey, yeah, he said. So he paid love to both of them. He never did go back to the old man with the tools or anything. So, so the old man uh, never did get his tools to work with. And I shall tell it in Indian too. So. Okay. And, and that's the kind of stories that my uh, father and my uncles and, and my grandparents, uh, my uh, cousins' grandparents used to tell. And we used to have visitors and tell stories like that. And so I am going to be relating stories in some of the books and, and things like that later on before I'm gone. So things have happened in many ways and sometimes I learn things from somebody else. And so I just add it on and, and it gives me a little more stories to tell. So I'm thankful for that because I'm always glad to tell anybody that if, the stories that I know if they need to know. <clears throat> So we are ready to get our story. We make it as of the whole thing. As we slay it on the way. As we slay it on the way. We are going to get our story. 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 We are going to get I had in Hope that he said that I was going to go to the 
Uin sellainen hitsahandahtu eeskettä, leikin vasta kerrataan. Sellainen hitsahandahtu eeskettä, sellainen tohto nahtua, tohto mahilee saatkeessa. Tohto herseni he, että mun ajan himanen sahan eeskettä ja ajan tukke. Saavoihin, nahtu mua, leikin vasta se, että oli leikin vuodenhän. Semmoinen ei saa antaa aftohoisia, aina uutkin saa näin mahille, että on sinä, että semmoinen ei saa näin aftohoisia. Mulla on se tapaskin se, ketsi tehdään. Mun hoa tehdään, nakho kuulin, se on sippattu, se voi joku laike tehdään. Mä oon tekin hoa kuulin takaan, mun ei äidät sinne ensin mahdollisesti, että on tietysti ketsi. Ai ja rai, tohti. Eihän hajoaa. Silloin jäätitysketsen on kuulun tuiskaan, että saa sen aftoeskeisen. Laaksiskaan, jota laksa on katsonut. Ahoikein näin, että minkä mä oon nuoret mundun osa oliskeisen. Ahoikein nämä mä oon nuoret keisen. Kokoulun opkit saanut kego, kehe, kehe, kokoulun nauleti, jotta jivan iskeho sitä. I hope you've enjoyed seeing some more of this year's celebration. This event is held um, each year on the second Friday before Halloween, so watch for the third annual celebration in October of 2000. I'd like to thank the Norman Arts and Humanities Council, which supported the celebration with a grant from the Norman Hotel Motel Tax, and also all of the volunteers who made this event possible. See you next time on WordPath. Ana ma gona kita wa pinema na oni kita na hene yo hene na hene yo hene ana ma gona kita wa pinema na oni kita.